Hi everyone, today we have several fourth year medical students here to share their favorite surgery study resources, the study schedule that they use to do well on their rotations, and just general tips so you can do well on your third year clerkships. What study resources do you recommend for this rotation? Oh god, surgery. Um, there is Pistana surgery notes, which are kind of a fan favorite. I didn't love them, to be honest. I felt them, they were a little too simple. UWorld was really helpful for surgery because the questions are so different from what you think they're gonna be. A lot of what you're doing in surgery just is not at all what the test is like. They don't really care about anatomy so much. They just care about like, how do you manage things? And a lot of it's not what you really see. So doing as many practice questions as you can for surgery is huge. So uh, UWorld is big. Doing the NBMEs is really important because you have to figure out what kind of questions they're asking. I think it's the most separate from what you're doing in the clinic from like what you're getting tested on. So as many practice questions as you can. Pisanos was fine, I, didn't, I don't know, I didn't love it. So surgery, also really big block, lots and lots of material. I stuck with the, the go-tos, I always did all the MBMEs that they had available, I always do those timed. Uh, I did all the UWorld questions I could, uh, I think they're about like 300 or so of the surgery ones. And then I used Pistana's notes which is a really nice little pocket book that you have with you in your pocket when you're actually on the wards. And you're, uh, it's just you can pull it out, you can read it. And it's nice too because it's a book, so if you're pulling it out to read it, no one's going to get mad at you like you're on your phone or you know messing around or something like that. So I found Pistana's notes was really succinct. He just explained things really clearly, and uh, he covered all the really, really important high-yield stuff. And he did it a pretty. Uh, he did a pretty good job explaining it. So I think that's a really high yield resource. Oh, surgery. Um, so <laughs> surgery was the one I was the most scared of. Uh, again, E World. Obviously, I'm just gonna preface everything is E World. But Pistana's I liked little pocket book I could carry around with me in my white coat. And uh, even in the OR, if I wasn't scrubbed in for a case, because I had another student with me, so we would rotate who scrubbed in. I could sort of sit in the corner of the OR and just sort of flip through Pistanas, uh, which was helpful. I did, I think I did case files and pretest for surgery. That was my second rotation, so it was a long time ago. But yeah, I did I did do pretest. Pretest was okay. That shelf is hard. Like you're gonna take that shelf and you're gonna feel horrible. And then you get your score back and it's like, oh, okay, that wasn't too bad. Everybody does bad. <laughs> so just do your best with UWorld. That was one of the ones where I felt like the stuff I was seeing on the rotation really didn't match up with what came up on my shelf. I didn't have any trauma on my rotation. So uh, again, online med ed for the things that you might not be seeing, depending on where you're rotating through, I thought was really helpful. So using online med ed for things like trauma was, was good for me. And then there's also, I'm gonna get his name wrong. He's a YouTube channel, I think it's Brolin, Paul Brolin. I'm sorry if that's wrong, but he's got he's got some good stuff too. For surgery, I would say the best one is the Pastana's little book that ha uh, it's a notebook that just has really quick facts about what's important for the surgical rotation and what's important for the surgery NBME questions, as well as the NBME tests that uh, you have to pay twenty bucks for a piece, I think, as well as UWorld surgery questions. I recommend uh, UWorld and um, Pastana's audio while you're driving to your rotation, as well as uh, Di Virgilio. Um, specifically, the trauma and the vascular chapters were my favorite. If you have time, you could read some of the other ones. I kind of thought that uh, Di Virgilio would be like really archaic before I read it, but then it's actually super good, super easy to read, um, and very thorough. So I highly recommend that one, especially if you're in a site where there isn't any trauma surgery for you to see. Shelf has a lot of trauma questions, so I'd Highly recommend that chapter. In addition to that, Anki, I used the clerkship stick. So surgery can be intense just because you're at the hospital for a long time. Um, the things that I found helped was the same thing I used kind of for every rotation, which is going to be UWorld, online med ed, pre-test and case files. So those are all pretty helpful. What else I found helpful in addition to that was a book called um, Dervigilio. I'm not sure how to pronounce it. But it's kind of similar to case files where, you can, where they kind of have cases broken up um, into organ systems, like they'll have GI stuff, um, ophthalmology, ortho, etc. And he does a good job of kind of going through the case, what you need to be worry worried about, what the best procedure will be, and kind of what to look for. Also for pimp questions, since surgery is famous for pimping, a book called Surgical Recall. It's kind of just question and answer format where it'll just have a question and then next to it it'll just have a quick um, kind of answer. It's really short, not much, there's no paragraphs or anything in it. Um, but that kind of helps kind of prepare for the cases and the questions that the attendings will ask us. Almost every question that I was asked in the OR was in that book. So it's kind of helpful to carry around in my pocket and read it in between cases. How did you schedule your studying for this rotation? God, 
that was also hard because you're working all the time. I studied a lot when I was on call. So the place that I was at made us do overnight calls once a week and then one weekend day a week. So I would just like devote all of my on-call time to studying. When I wasn't in surgery, I was pretty lucky that my calls were kind of boring. I had a few really exciting ones, but so I spent a lot of time studying there, mostly because I was like in a small hospital on-call room and no one was there to distract me and I didn't really have anything else to do. It's reasonable to get through the year-old questions for that. So setting, again, setting a goal and doing it, that's the hardest one, I think, because you're just so tired at the end of the day, but you have to like go home and study that night or like if you're not studying throughout, you're gonna, you're gonna have a bad time. Also very difficult because you're, like I said, you're at the hospital for a long period of time. It's a very exhausting shift and then you get home and you're just dead tired and it's really hard to want to study. So if you can keep those question blocks small, like 10 questions a day, uh, or even 20 questions a day, you can have UWorld on your phone because there's some downtime throughout the day in surgery if you're waiting for a case or something like that. Just pull your phone out and try and do like two or three problems here and there. And Pistana's Notes, like I said, is another great way. You can just pull that out when there's a little bit of downtime, try and get through some of that material and they usually, uh, no one's gonna get mad at you for studying. My surgery rotation was maybe a little different than the average one where I had a lot of clinic time and then it was pretty much like half clinic, half OR. And so when I was in clinic, uh, I would see patients and between patients, I would do a couple of UWorld questions while we're waiting for the next one to come in. It was really sporadic studying. And then um, on days where I was on call, it was pretty much just studying until I got called in. On OR days, I, I couldn't study in the break room where our OR was, it was just too crazy. And so I just took that time to not really do anything. Maybe flip through pistanas, maybe practice suture ties. Uh, and it was really just on my days off, I, I hit the U world really hard. I made sure that I had enough time to study, no, to read all the pistanas. And then I made sure I had enough time to do all the U world surgery questions. Surgery was definitely one of the hardest ones because they have the longest hours. I know I was working maybe 70 to 80 hour weeks most days and there wasn't a lot of time to study there and I was really lucky that it was one of my later rotations so I'd already studied a lot of the material for step two already so I wasn't that worried about it. For surgery I studied only after my rotation like in the evening in addition to like anytime I had some time in between. Um, I was in trauma surgery for uh, all eight weeks so it was kind of nice because we had some time just waiting around um, and so I got a lot of studying done during that time. I had my iPad with uh, Anki questions as well as UWorld. So I was kind of always, whenever I had like five extra minutes, I would just pop out my iPad and start reading or doing questions because you really have to make time. Surgery, the hours are really long. You're often working on weekends. So it's really important to make use of every extra minute you have. So same thing with the other rotations, you kind of have to plan ahead. You have to do a little bit every single day because you're not going to have time to kind of cram at the end since you're going to be going to the OR every single day or we're going to be in clinic every single day. Trying to get up early and getting some questions done in the morning kind of helped me out. Also in between, there's, there's downtime in between cases when people are writing notes and you're kind of sitting around waiting. I always found it helpful to carry a book or even if you have an iPad or an iPhone with your old on it and you have internet access, you can always squeeze in some studying there and you'd be surprised how much you can fit in if you do five or 10 questions at a time. What general tips would you recommend to do well on this rotation? In surgery to do well, you kind of have to check your ego at the door and realize that especially surgery is just all stuff you've never seen before, you never learn about. Definitely read up on your anatomy every single night. Read up on GI anatomy before you even start because they're gonna ask you so many questions about it, both in didactics and your preceptors. Um, and just going home and studying whatever you're gonna do the next day, whatever uh, procedures you're gonna see, Go home and read about them so that the next day you don't look like an idiot to your attendings. <laughs> so surgery, I would say always be there on time. You don't want to be late. You want to be as helpful as you can. And so that means in the morning when you're doing pre-rounding and like getting your list together and things like that for the residents, you want to try and anticipate what kind of information they like to see on the page. And you want to try and be as complete as you can. It's kind of your opportunity to sort of decrease their workload. And anytime you can do some of their work for them, they really, really appreciate it. And that goes a long way in terms of how much exposure they let you have and how much you know you get to do during cases. And then also when it comes time to fill out your eval. So this was, again, a rotation I was really scared of and I ended up doing pretty well on it. I would say no sterile technique before you go <laughs> because, and you probably will mess it up. A lot of med students mess it up. The thing is just how you handle it. If you handle it with grace and humility and you're really nice to the scrub techs, 
uh, and uh, the nurses, then they'll, they'll be understanding and they, they won't make you feel too bad about it. But if you can avoid that, that would be great because um, nobody likes to have their sterile field ruined. Uh, know how to suture and how to tie knots. That'll make you look super cool. If you don't know how to do it going in, that's okay. Just make sure you learn and you show that you're trying. I think that goes a long way. For surgery, it's really a mix of whoever your preceptor is, I think, that can make or break the rotation for you. And some of that just comes down to luck, which is too bad, but it's true. I had a really nice surgery preceptor. Uh, and so I felt really safe to ask stupid questions and to get answers wrong. But something that could have made it go better for me would have been really studying up on my anatomy, which is a weak point for me. Uh, I know the gallbladder anatomy and all the silly names of all the ob obscure structures really well. Uh, the thyroid, uh, you know, know how to pretty much do a, uh, an appy because they'll, they'll ask you, you know, what is this? What is that? Uh, all the anatomy near there the layers of the abdomen, things like that. So no shortage of things to study. Uh, but I think if you just show that you're trying, that goes a long way, hopefully. And if you have a preceptor who doesn't recognize that or appreciate it, you know, you just gotta get through it. I had some friends who had really, really rough surgery rotations and they survived, but uh, be, there for, be there for your friends that are on other rotations too. To do well in surgery, you need to know the anatomy of what kind of surgeries your surgeons do. So my surgeons were general surgeons that saw acute cases in the hospital. So I was really, I knew the anatomy of an appendicitis, I knew the anatomy of the gallbladder, I knew the anatomy of the gut essentially really well. That was the most important thing. Also know what's pertinent to surgery, know what's important to your doctors. Don't know, don't present an internal medicine style presentation to your docs. Give them what they want to hear. They don't care about the BUN and the creatinine. They don't care about the electrolytes as much as they care if what the output in the tubes are or what their abdomen looks like today. Those are the important things. If you want to go into surgery or if you don't want to be embarrassed in front of your preceptors and get yelled at by them, um, I definitely recommend actually learning the practical tips. So things like suturing, knowing what kinds of sutures to do and hand ties, things like that is really important. Um, it's not going to be on your shelf, but it definitely helps. The more you do, the more preceptors will allow you to do more um, if you show that you can suture and do head lats and things like that. Um, so for this, I bought pig feet. It costs $4 at any Asian store and you can steal sutures uh, from your um, hospital and just practice. I really liked the pig feet versus banana um, skin because it was more realistic and really helped quite a bit with my suturing skills. Big thing for surgery is going to be being prepared. It's kind of a new environment. You're going to be in the OR. There's a lot of stuff that comes with that and that you need to be properly scrubbed and all that stuff. But just being there early, knowing what the operation is going to be, why you're doing it, will kind of help you for getting all the questions right in the OR and kind of knowing what's going on.